Our text today is from the Gospel reading. And Jesus, when he saw the people, was moved with compassion because they were a sheep having no shepherd. Many of you know where the storyline here is leading to the best known, widely remembered of them all, the feeding of the 5,000. But it helps if you remember how it all began. The 12 had just returned from their first missionary journey and found themselves swamped in a sea of humanity. People constantly coming and going so that they had no time to think, much less to eat. Then Jesus spoke words, music to their ears. Come away with me to a quiet place and rest a while. Quickly, they boarded ship and set out for a solitary place on the far side of the sea. Having tramped the dusty roads of Galilee, it must have been a relief for them to leave the crowds behind, to feel the familiar deck under their feet once more, the wind and the spray in their faces. But they could not be hid. All along the shoreline, People recognized that familiar sail. Noted the path they were taking and predicted their destination. Soon, restless feet were pounding down the roadway that ran around the lake. Others followed. More joined in and still they came all the day long. So by the time they beached their little boat on yonder side. The quiet place was no longer quiet. And the rest they looked for turned into a human anthill of activity. You can almost hear the disciples groaning inwardly. Oh, no, not this again! Our vacation is ruined. Our holiday is spoiled. These careless, thoughtless people stomping into our privacy. They should have made an appointment. But not Jesus. See, Mark tells us when Jesus saw the crowd, he was moved with compassion. And he tells us why. Jesus' heart went out to them. Because they were scattered like sheep, having no shepherd. The picture of the shepherd and the sheep has a long, long history. It goes all the way back to the story of Cain and his brother Abel, who was a shepherd. So was the patriarch Jacob. And Rachel, the love of his life, was a shepherdess. So was Moses. And the woman he married, he first met, bringing her flock to a watering hole in the wilderness. Just about everybody remembers the story of David, the what? Shepherd boy of Bethlehem. And in the Christmas story, the shepherds keeping watch over their flocks by night. The old call to worship has never really changed. Oh, come! Let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For we are the people of His pasture and the flock of his right hand. Now, the picture is blurred for us by our rough 
Western ways of sheep herding. The picture that comes to our minds is a mass of huddled, bleeding creatures, harassed by dogs nipping at their heels, driven on and on by drovers, till they are herded into cattle trucks and hauled away. Oh, but the way of an eastern shepherd with his sheep was far more affectionate and intimate and personal. And you never get away from it in the Bible. Did you know that the Hebrew word for neighbor is grazer? Your neighbor is the one who grazes next to you in God's pasture. The leader, political and spiritual, are always called shepherds. And so are the parents into whose hands the lambs of God are commended for safekeeping. The word pastor means shepherd. But what Jesus saw was a cruel distortion of that picture. He saw the people and sheep scattered abroad and having no shepherd. They were confused and restless and lost and unloved. He saw them as people who had no one to love them or care, and they knew it. For them, the green pastures were always over the next hill. The pools of water were stagnant and polluted, and they were frightened by the shadows in the dark valleys into which they would enter. The murder of John the Baptist burned among them like a fever. They came and they buried the headless body of this man who had kindled their hopes as no one else had. And now they were scattered. Did you notice the kind of words? Lost sheep. Not wicked, stupid, not cursed, but lost, Jesus said. Well, how did they get lost? Well, people who know about this tell me that a sheep really nibbles himself lost, head down, nearsighted as he is. He's just looking for the next tuft of grass. Till he comes to a hole in the fence, goes right on through. And then, with the evening coming on, he suddenly notices that he's far from the flock and from his shepherd. The poor, pitiful creature should not have gotten lost, but he did. Hey, we can understand that. None of us wants to end up friendless and alone, separate from his fellow man and from his ship, but, but it happened. In the hurry and flurry of day to day living, many things to do, places to go, grass always greener on the other side of the fence, insatiable appetites of ours that always want more and more. Little wonder that the voice of our shepherd grows fainter and fainter to us. And then one day, hopefully not too late, we look up and found that we are gone from the people who meant most to us. And there's nobody left who knows us or cares about us. Oh, but a shepherd does. And that was the problem here. The people did not have a shepherd. Their political leaders were Tiberius Caesar in Rome 
Herod, king of Galilee. Pontius Pilate, governor of Judea. They loved the people. They controlled them. They manipulated. They exploited them for their own self-advantage. And the religious leaders were no better. Annas and Caiaphas, the high priest, yeah, right. The scribes and the Pharisees. Praying upon the sheep instead of praying for the sheep. Fleecing the flock instead of feeding the flock. Aren't you picking it up in the story? How they ran the concession stands in the temple. Skimmed the enormous profit of the changing of money into temple coins. How their religious leaders stood aloof from them and above them. In their flowing robes. In the workplace. The best seats in the synagogue. And when they couldn't think of anything worse, they called Jesus a friend of the people. Scandalous. A friend of tax collectors and sinners. Wow. Oh. And you know something? The people figured that out. Hiring, Jesus called them, not shepherds. He explained, he that is a hireling and not the shepherd, see if the wolf coming and flee it. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and doesn't care for the sheep. The hireling is in it for what? The hire. The money. Mercenary motive. It's just a job to him. And when danger threatens or the wolves come, hey man, he saves his own skin. A real shepherd, on the other hand, would throw himself between the wolf and the sheep. Himself between the flock and the predators, be they man or beast. And, and, and people can tell that they always know, like kids, whether you like them or not. And people know when they're valued not for who they are, oh, but for what they have. And so once you figure out that no one around here cares about you, then you begin, don't you? Me too. Fixate on on. Take care of your own self. And then you scatter. Oh, man. So they got no place else to go. They tried it. They went to Jesus. And Jesus taught them. And the odd thing is, that whole day passed and they never noticed how time was flying. They totally ignored, for some reason, the discomfort. No refreshment. No nourishment. They were like beggars who suddenly found a source of food. They hung on Jesus' words. Ah, but who can ever hear it too often? I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. That means I will always be there for you and not count you as there for me. My sheep hear my voice, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father who gave them to me is greater than all, and nobody can snatch them out of my Father's hand, for I and the Father are one. Jesus cares. When all the other shepherds of yours are false and unfaithful. So the long day passes. And as the shadows fall long over the surging multitude, the disciples come to Jesus and say, This is a deserted place. And the hour is late. Send the people away. And Jesus says, 
Let's not do that. Let's feed them. Oh, boy, then the dam broke. And all the irritation. And all the frustration poured out. No! You don't understand! 200 penny worth of bread! Eight months of a man's wages would not buy enough food for this crowd to eat! And Jesus said, No! You don't understand! You never send people away! Never! If you call yourself a Christian, never you solve a problem by getting rid of the people. Hang on to that, because that scenario replays. The disciples, imagine this, forgot that they had a shepherd. They didn't have to worry. You know the story. I know you've heard it. Luxury liner sailing to San Francisco from the Orient. Banquet on board last evening. Dignitaries from the audience asked to come up and do their thing, sing a song, tell a story, whatever. Shakespearean actor gives an eloquent recital of the 23rd Psalm and large applause all around. At the tail end of the program, they get this old white-haired guy coming back to the States after 40 years as a missionary on the mainland of China. He has nothing new to offer. He apologizes. And so, he says, the 23rd Psalm. And you could have heard a pin drop in the room. I don't get it. The friend of the actor says to him, you gave a masterful rendition of that Psalm and yet when the old guy stammered his way through it, the people were moved to tears. That's easy. The actor said, I know the psalm. The old guy knows the shepherd. Oh, exactly. I know that Jesus is a good shepherd for one simple, unarguable reason. He came from the other side of the sky to the other side of the track and found me who was lost. And he restoreth my soul. And my cup runneth over. And because my cup runneth over, I have always had and will always have enough to share with others. Amen.